Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, crime, I'm doing my long overdue 87th Precinct library tour. So the 87th Precinct series is my favourite book series ever. Um, I've mentioned it a bunch of times on the channel and I did early on in the in the days of the channel do a top five of my five favourite 87th Precinct books. Um, but I've never done a video kind of, you know, more broadly dedicated to the series. Um, and until recently, I didn't have a complete collection of paper books um, for all the books in the series. I've now closed that gap. The last five that I didn't have paper copies of. Um, I've I've bought and recently I can't remember when I finished doing it a year or so ago um, or maybe a bit less I finished doing a full read through of, of all the books in the series um, and the like the full series if you like includes not just the books um, so the, the regular books but also a few other things which are which I'll talk about as we get to them um, so what I'm going to do today firstly I'll very briefly give you a bit of an overview of the series and of Ed McVeigh the author um, and then I will just go through all the books, basically. Um, I'm certainly not going to talk about all of them because there's over 50 of them. Um, but I will, uh, you know, I will, what, ones that um, I've got something to say about, I will I will say something. So I've got my iPad here because I've got a few notes on here. So um, the series started in 1956 with the first book, Cop Hater. And it's become, um, you know, famed as the the book series really that cemented the police procedural genre so a lot of the uh, you know kind of tropes and things like that that we see in modern particularly in like tv um, cop shows um, can be linked back to the 87th precinct series um, and certainly M. McBain felt that the tv show Hill Street Blues was heavily influenced by um, by his series of books but <laughs> I think was a bit annoyed about not having ever got a credit for that so a number of the books uh, have been filmed um, by some quite famous directors as well. So Akira Kurosawa, the very famous Japanese director uh, who made The Seven Samurai, also made a uh, an adaptation of King's Ransom, one of the earlier books in the series. Uh, so that was filmed in Japan, in Japan as High and Low. Um, there've been Indian, um, you know, Indian movies based on the books. Um, there's a French Canadian book based, uh, French Canadian movie based on Blood Relatives, one of the later ones. There's uh, so Burt Reynolds and Rucker Welch. Um, in the 70s starred in the adaptation of Fuzz. Um, so there's been a whole load of different, uh, you know, different movie takes. And there was um, briefly an 87th Precinct TV show as well. And kind of in, in I think, the, the late 50s, early 60s. Um, but not a great deal TV-wise since then. So there were some TV movies, I think, in the 90s, um, which are, I think, supposed to be pretty bad. Um but yeah, so it, it's one of those series of books that has been filmed many times, but um, hasn't really said, there was never been a movie that really cemented it in the public consciousness. So where there have been movies, they haven't been linked with each other in, in any way, really. Um, so it's not like something like, um, you know, the Poirot films or something like that, where everyone knows them and associates them with the books. The S7 Precinct based films I think are much more just you know films on their own that may not even refer to the you know to the 87th precinct they've just taken the plot and some of the characters um, so I think that's one of the reasons why it's less well known as a series um, than many sadly it's 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 still in print but not all of the books are um, so because partly because there are so many books in the series and also because McBain skipped around through different publishers throughout the decades that the, the series was being published and, and the last book so I said the first book came out in uh, 1956 um, the last one Fiddlers came out in 2005 so it was nearly 50 years that he was writing these books um, so skipped around through different publishers during that time. Um, so many of the books are available through Amazon now, um, through Alison and, Bush and Bushby, I think it's called, which is kind of their in-house publisher, um, but not all of them. So there's obviously still some rights issues going on with some of the books. So you can get a lot of them on Kindle, um, and indeed on Kindle Unlimited, if, you, if you've got that and you fancy giving them a try, um, but don't expect to be able to read all of them. Um, as with many um, long-running detective series you don't have to read them in order I think particularly with the later books it works better if you read them in order because there are some continuing storylines particularly about like the private lives of the detectives and things like that um, 
that run through multiple books. So as you get later on in the series, it does make sense to, to read them in order. Um, also, like any series, you know, not all the books are fantastic. Many of them are brilliant. Um, most of them are good or very good. There's a couple that are a bit a bit subpar. But to be honest with you, even even when they're not as good as the other books in the series, McBain is still better than most crime writers, in my opinion. And what he really brings is he's got a fantastic ear for dialogue. He's quite playful. He's not. He's never afraid to kind of get into the political side of things and give his opinions on things. And he was certainly um, a liberal. Um, so you do see that creeping out quite often in the books. Um, but he's whilst he does show the darker side of life, definitely, he's also very, very playful. So quite a lot of the books, you'll have bits where, you know, the mystery um, twists, you know, turns around like a mispronounced word and things like that. Um, so he's, he's very, very playful and always really inventive with the mysteries. So you generally feel in these books like there is a, an actual mystery that is being solved. And when you get to the resolution at the end of it, you kind of go, aha, right, I get it. You never feel like you've been swindled like you do with some uh, some mystery authors. You can see how he's, you know, he, how he's laid the clues out and how the cops have got to that, um, that solution. Um, so they're very, very satisfying as mystery novels. Um, the characters are also great. So the dialogue is always fantastic and he's very good at introducing um, minor characters, you know, just for a scene or two or just for one book who, you know, you really get to know and you really feel like they are living people. But the main characters that run through all of the books are, you know, particularly enjoyable. So the main detective um, is a detective called Steve Carella, um, who um, McBain actually tried to kill off very early on in the series, but the publishers wouldn't have it. And Carella became, you know, the, the constant throughout all of the books. So I think in all of the books you get Steve Carella. Um, you don't necessarily get all of the other detectives in every book. A lot of them are in many of the books, but I think Carella is probably the only one who's in all of them. So you get Steve Carelli, you get Teddy, his wife, who's a deaf mute, um, who features in many of the books. Um, they've got kids. Um, and then there's a there's a bunch of other detectives who you, who you get to know. And one of the things McBain does is in, in each of the books, you know, he will reintroduce the detectives to you. But he does it in such a way that it's kind of fun, even if you're, a, a, you know, even if you've read all the books up to that point. Um, he always introduces the detectives in a certain way and you kind of get to, you, you grow to love that, um, the way he describes them and things like that. So he's, he's a really wonderful writer, very entertaining. So he's very, very funny as well and was in fact a good friend of P.G. Woodhouse's. Um, so he worked, so before he started writing, um, McBain worked at a um, publishers in the States and I th or an agency, I think, um, and got to know P.G. Woodhouse through that. Um, and you can see that kind of um, that kind of humour of the absurd creeps, you know, does creep into the books a lot in in the same way as it does in Woodhouse's work. Um, the other thing I haven't said yet, actually, of course, is that Ed McBain wasn't his name. Um, so he was born um, Salvatore Lombino. So he's the son of Italian immigrants to the States. Um, he changed his name to Evan Hunter. Um, uh, I think, you know, fairly early on in adulthood uh, and also published a lot of books as, as Evan Hunter. So most famously, um, The Black Ball Jung Jungle, which was very famously filmed with Sidney Poitier. Um, he also wrote the screenplay as Evan Hunter to Alfred Hitchcock's The Bird. So he adapted the Daphne du Maurier um, story into the movie The Birds and, and published dozens of other books as McBain as well and also published under other pseudonyms so early on in his career he wrote a few kind of juvenile science fiction novels for, for example and he wrote other crime novels under other names as well many of which have subsequently been republished under the Ed McBain name um, and that's certainly the name that he's he's best known for um, and as McBain as well as writing the 87th Precinct series he did another series the Matthew Hope series which is about a lawyer um, in Florida and um, there aren't as many of those I think there's about 10 of those and, and there's one where um, Steve Corella and um, Matthew Hope uh, team up on a on a case um, so that's quite fun so he did combine the two series um, towards the end so yeah that's it really as I say one of my favorite series ever um, I mean, I've loved these books since I, so I first read one. I first picked one up in a charity shop um, when I was a teenager and gradually you know I've picked picked them up over the years since then when I had my big terrible 
um, sell off uh, when I was in my 20s. I got rid of all the ones I had. And since then, now I've got a bit more room and a bit more money. I've gradually built my collection up again to the point now where it is complete. Uh, it's not perfect. So there are certainly some of these which I would prefer to have other editions of. And maybe at some point I'll do that. Um, but for now, I'm, I'm pretty happy to have to have all of them. So that's the, the kind of background. I've gone on for ages. Um, so let me now go through the books. So I'm going to show you all of the books in order. There's a few that I've got multiples of, so we'll show you um, both copies. Um, and as I say, a few of them, I, not all of them, but a few of them I'll probably say a few words about as well. So if we go to the start then, so the first book, Cop Hater. So this is a rather nice vintage edition um, of that book, um, which I got, I can't remember where I got this from. Um, but yeah, it's a very nice, a very nice vintage edition of Cop Hater. Um, I've got to figure out where I'm going to put these. Hmm, this could be interesting. We might end up with piles of books falling over, as usual. Um, I've also got a slightly newer Penguin edition of Cop Hater, which I had before I got the, the nice old one. Um, the second book then is The Mugger. So this is again a Penguin, UK Penguin edition. Um, then we've got The Pusher. So this is a slightly more vintage um Penguin edition, so I've got a few of these Green Spine Penguin Crime um, editions, which all have fantastic covers. Like, I really love the uh, the design of that cover. Uh, this one, the next one, the Con Man, so another nice Penguin Green Spine edition, and then Killer's Choice, similarly a Penguin, and Killer's Payoff. And then we have another penguin one. So this is a more modern penguin one. So Lady Killer. All right, I've got a string more penguins here. One of which has got a fantastic cover. You'll, you'll know it when we get to it. Um, so there's another one, Killer's Wedge. And as you can see, these are all, I didn't say that before, these are all small books. So this one is 140 pages. So you can, you know, you can easily polish off an 87th Precinct mystery on a, on a long train journey. Um, they are wonderful for that. He is very good at being succinct, but still leaving you feeling like you've had a full, you know, a full meal, um, if you like. But he, he doesn't waste his words at all in these books. Uh, so next one then is Till Death. And you can see another one with a very similar cover, King's Ransom. So this is the one that was filled by Akira Kurosawa. So it's about a kidnapping gone wrong. Here we have Give the Boys a Great Big Hand. So this is one of the kind of punny titles. So it starts with uh, one of the uh, patrolmen finding a severed hand um, and progresses from there. Uh, the next one is The Heckler. Now this is, and this is my favourite cover of all the ones I've got, I just think that's deliciously creepy. Now this is, I believe, um, the first appearance, and I might be wrong, I think this is the first book that has a character called the Deaf Man in. So the Deaf Man became a continuing character, and he's in, I think, five or six of the books. Um, and those books have a slightly different tone to the rest. They're definitely more comic. He And he's at like a criminal mastermind um, who goes up against the um, the... the detectives of the 87th precinct and always has some kind of really grand scheme um, which they always manage to foil at the last minute but he usually gets away to to come back and haunt the city another day and that's something else I didn't say actually so the city in these books is is unnamed it's clearly based on New York um, and he gives the different boroughs of the city different you know different names um, so they're not you know they're not Manhattan and things like that um, but yeah, it's clearly based on New York, and McBain did live in New York for a long time. Um, but yeah, it's not not named as New York. The other thing you can see in in this one, which is I just noticed as I flipped through it, um, which again is typical of these books, is you get things like this. So you get like photographs of of the evidence and that kind of thing, and you know report sheets that the detectives have filled out, diagrams and things like that. So he really immerses you in the process of, of detective work and police work, uh, which is always great fun. Okay, so moving over to some pan editions now. So the next book in the series is See Them Die. And then we have a more modern pan one, Lady, Lady, I Did It. This is one of the ones that um, where the, the mystery resolves around a, a misunderstanding of something that's been said in a, a rather enjoyable way. Um, the next one... So this one's slightly different in that this is actually three novellas rather than a novel. So this is The Empty Hours. 
uh, which is they're all quite enjoyable in that one um, I've got two copies of this one which are identical so I'm not sure why I've done that I did used to have another copy of this next one that was a different colour um, which I lent to someone and never got back uh, annoyingly but I've, I've now ended up with two copies with the same cover so this is Like Love with a rather saucy cover there um, next up 10 plus 1 so this is a great one that has a it's one of those kind of crime stories where there's a mystery in the past uh, the detectives have to solve to, to solve the mystery in the present it's a really good one um, next one is Axe so this is you can see a UK edition because we get the E on the end of Axe in the in the US it was just AX um, this is a rather nice slightly older um, pan edition of He Who Hesitates so this is one I really like because it's very different from the other books in the series so this one is told largely from the perspective of um, a guy who's come to the city who's a criminal who's kind of building up to killing someone uh, I think he kills someone and then he's building up to confessing to it um, so most of the story revolves around that and you just you know that all the police characters are kind of quite peripheral to it um, okay next up we have Doll which has a nicely creepy doll cover there uh, next we have 80 million eyes so this is a, a an enjoyable mystery it's a bit silly but it's quite enjoyable about a, a tv host who dies is murdered on camera while 40 million people are watching um and it's about them trying to figure out how it's been done so yeah a very enjoyable mystery that one uh, next up we have fuzz so this is quite an entertaining one uh, this is one of the ones that was filmed so this is the one that had burt reynolds and racco welch um right how are we going to do this i'm definitely going to run out of space in a minute right okay let's see how we go so uh next up shotgun um which is quite a quite a good one it's got a really brutal opening this one i seem to remember um Right, bear with me. I'm just going to move this box and then I can stick them up there. Okay. Next up, Jigsaw, which is about a um, money from a bank robbery that's gone missing and various criminals trying to piece the bits together to, um, to get the money. Okay. Next we have Hail Hail, the gang's all here. Sadie when she died so this is one of my favorite ones so this is about the murder um, of a woman and Corella in particular speaking to different men who knew her to try and figure out what's gone on it's really dark this one really really dark um, here's another one of the deaf man book so let's hear it for the deaf man hell to the chief so this one is one where so I said McBay was uh, could get quite political so this one is about the mayor of the, of the city being quite corrupt and he's clearly um, a bit of a jibe at Richard Nixon. And then we have Bread, uh, which is another quite enjoyable one. Um, right, we're getting there. We're getting through them. So moving on to, let's see where we are now time-wise. I think we must be in the 70s. Yeah, 76 this one came out. So um, this is Blood Relatives. So this is the movie tie-in edition. So this was filmed by uh, Claude Chabrol in Canada with uh, Donald Sutherland as Steve Carella. Um, so we have, so long as you both shall live. Long time no see. Calypso, though this is another one that's really, really dark. There's some really grim um, stuff that happens in this one. It's about some, some various guys being kidnapped by um, a woman and horrible things happening to them. Uh, then we have ghosts. So this is a bit of a controversial one in that, as the title would suggest, it's about ghosts and it does have real ghosts in it, um, which is a, doesn't really sit well with the rest of the series, which tends to be very realistic. Um, okay, I think we're getting into the 80s now. Put that box on the floor. Okay, so we've got heat, ice, and lightning, as you can see, there's a bit of a theme going on there. Um, Eight Black Horses, which is another one of the Deaf Man books. Poison, which is quite an enjoyable one, um, revolving around poisonings, but um, there's a really good mystery at the heart of that one. Um, Tricks, so Tricks is a really enjoyable one where it's all set on Halloween and you just have loads of different stuff going on in the city, loads of different crimes going on. A lot of the books have more than one crime. There tends to be one central crime, sometimes a secondary crime, 
Um, so sometimes you get two that kind of got equal billing, but there's usually a few smaller crimes dotted around as well. Whereas this one is really just all smaller crimes. Um, but yeah, really, a really, really enjoyable one, that one. Um, moving on then. So the next lot I've got as, as hardbacks um, because for some reason there's a string of them which are much easier to get in the UK um, as hardbacks than paperbacks. I don't know why that is. Um, they must have started publishing them in hardback in the UK. Maybe they were pushing them a bit and published too many hardbacks. Um, anyway, we've got Lullaby. Actually, this one isn't a hardback. This is Vespers. Uh, this this one's really good. I like this one a lot. Um, so this is about a murder, um, like a gang murder in a church. Um, so that's quite a lot of fun. There's a lot going on in that one. Uh, Widows, which is another fun one. Kiss. So this one's quite interesting because this one involves another detective. So it involves like a like a private detective as well, and it's got quite a nice hard boiled feel to it. So it's kind of McBain trying to do a bit of hard boiled stuff. Um, Mischief, which is uh, centres around graffiti, uh, which is quite a fun one. Um, right now we get into one of the first really interesting ones. Um, so this is from when did this first come out? I think this was first published in. Playboy actually. So this book was published in 84. I can't remember when the story was published but this is um, An All Through the Night. So it's a short story, uh, Christmas themed as you might have guessed from the, the cover and the title, set in the Edson precinct and just about I think you know just about Christmas Eve in the precinct. Um, originally as I say I think it was published in Playboy um, but then was republished as this rather lovely um, illustrated edition. So mine's an extra library edition. It's got all sorts of scribbles in it. It's reasonably hard to come by. Um, but yeah, it's got nice illustrations of the various detectives and things like that. So it's a, a really lovely little addition to the series. Um, very nice for fans of the series. Um, moving back on to um, more normal stuff. So we've got uh, Romance. And then Nocturne, which is the one that I named in one that played by Visions did a um, most Disturbing Books collab video a while ago and this was the one I named as my most disturbing book so this has a one particular crime in, in this book which is absolutely horrific and what makes it even more horrific is the attitude of the, of the guys who, who commit the crime and how completely carefree and you know unconcerned they are for um, for the victims or anyone else for that matter um, so yeah a really chilling one that one um, next up so this is an interesting one so this is the uh, January I can't remember what year it is sometime in the 80s uh, or maybe early 90s so anywhere January oh sorry not that early 90s so January 11th 1997 TV Guide so this is as I said earlier when I was talking about the movie adaptations there were a few bad TV movies um, and at that time Ed McBain wrote a short story uh, called Reruns which appears which appeared in TV t uh, in TV Guide uh, and it has only ever um, appeared in TV Guide it's never been anthologized or um, put in any of his books or anything like that so oh, now I can't find it I should have uh, should have put a thing in here so here we go so Reruns a very short story but quite entertaining um, with Corella and Maya Maya who's one of the other um, regular characters um, investigating um, a crime um, that's been uh, perpetrated against an actor. Um, so yeah a very enjoyable little short story. So yeah word for word I think this is the most expensive uh, book I've ever I've ever bought given that I was only interested in the short story. I think the actual TV guide was only about three dollars or something like that but then I had to pay about 15 quid or something like that to get it shipped over from the states um so yes slightly annoying but hey it's uh, i had to have it to complete my collection um right moving on then so a few more novels so we have the big bad city uh the last dance and money 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 and then uh fat ollie's book so fat ollie um is a continuing or he's not in all of the books and he only appears kind of I think about midway through the series and then he's you know turns up occasionally towards the end of the series he is in every book so he's Ollie Weeks who's a detective in one of the other precincts in the city who's an absolutely fantastic character so he's completely awful and he's a complete bigot he's racist he's sexist he's homophobic he's 
awful, um, but he's also very, very funny, and he's also a fantastic detective. So he just is always prepared to put the legwork in to um, to, to catch the criminal. Um, so he gets involved in quite a lot of the 87th Precinct um, cases and has become probably my favourite character um, in the series, not, not least because of his name. Um, so in this one, he's written a book um, which he loses the manuscript for, um, and uh, a criminal finds that manuscript and thinks that it's real, thinks it's a real story because it's written um, as a, it's written in the style of like a police report. So this criminal um, finds that uh, and thinks it's a real mystery and is trying to actually solve it whilst Ollie is trying to get the manuscript back. So it's very, very funny. It's definitely the funniest of the Ace and Precinct books. Um, really, really entertaining. I, I really love this book. Okay, so next up, we are nearly at the end. We have The Frumious Bandersnatch, which is one of the less good um, ones in the series, but quite still quite entertaining. Um, then we have one that I do not have a paper copy of because you cannot have a paper copy of it unless you print it out yourself. Um, so this is a kind of half a short story called Love or Money. So McBain did um, a thing with the BBC in early 2000s, I think, where they were getting famous writers to write the beginning of a story, and then they had a competition um, where people could then write the end of the story, and and the writer would help pick the winner. Um, so he wrote the beginning of one called Love or Money. Um, I will try and find a link to it and put it in the description for the video, um, so people have that. But yeah, it's 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 incomplete because it's deliberately only half a story, but it's you still have to read it if you're a completist. Um, so moving on then, so we have Hark, um, which is the penultimate novel in the series. Um, then we have one called Only Hate, um, which is a novella, which is in this uh, collection that McBain um, edited called Transgressions, which has also got people like uh, Joyce Carol Oates, Stephen King, John Farris, Lawrence Block. So some really good writers in here. And I do need to read the rest of this collection. I've only read them at day one so far. Um, so Only Hate is, is a really interesting story. And it's kind of his response to 9-11. Um, so yeah, a, a, a very interesting one. Um, and it must be said as well that uh, Money, Money, Money um, ends with a, a, which was written, I think he wrote it in 2000, and it was published in um, the autumn of 2001. Um, but it, fe it ends with a terrorist attack, um, a Muslim terrorist attack on uh, an opera house. Um, so McBain was completely freaked out, I think, by the fact that it, it was published just before 9-11. I think he was actually on the road doing the, the book tour for it when 9-11 happened. Um, so, yeah, the, the story in this only hate is his response to that. Uh, and it's a really good story, actually. I really like that one. And then the final book, um, which is wonderful, is Fiddlers. So I don't know if McBain knew so he had been ill he'd had various health problems later on in in his life um including um throat cancer um i'm not sure if he knew when he wrote this that he was dying or that it was going to be the last day to the precinct book but it does have a, an element of wrapping up in it with some of the you know the continuing stories with the characters and things like that so it's a really lovely end to the series um so yes that's it my tour through well 55 55 books plus um only Hate, the novella and the TV Guide one, um, and Love or Money, which I have in the post-it. Um, so yes, uh, let me know if you're an 87th Precinct fan. Let me know um, if you've read um, any or all of the books. Um, let me know what you think of them. As I say, I'm a huge fan of this series. I absolutely love it. I love McBain generally, but I particularly love the 87th Precinct series. One final thing. So if you are a fan of the series, or if you just want to know more about it, there's a fantastic podcast, which I think has just wrapped up, um, called Hark, the 87th Precinct podcast, where the hosts have been reading all of the books that have been going for a good few years now, since before COVID, through COVID, um, to, to, you know, right up until now. Um, so they've been reading all of the books and they do an episode of about half an hour or 45 minutes a month um, where they talk about the book. Um, so I wouldn't recommend necessarily listening to them if you haven't read the books yet. Um, because they, they do sometimes contain spoilers. Um, but if you are a fan of the books and you haven't listened to the podcast series, it's fantastic and you should definitely listen to it. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. Um, as always, I hope you're safe and well. I hope you're really good stuff. And I will speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.